Last week in episode three, we covered the basics of RODI filters, how to make seawater, and we got our innovative Marine 40 long tank wet. Today, all things climate and safety. I'm Matthew, your BRS beginner guru, and for most of the year, maintaining the proper climate means heating our tanks. 77 to 78 degrees is the goal for the vast majority of saltwater aquariums. We'll need a properly sized heater placed in the correct location that maintains a narrow temperature range and that alerts us when something's wrong. To accomplish all of this, we will need a heater and a temperature controller. All heaters will eventually break, but here's a secret for finding the most reliable. Check the manufacturer warranty. For example, Finex stands by its products for six months, while Innovative Marine stands by its Helio smart heater for five years. Needless to say, we've chosen the Innovative Marine Helio PTC smart heating system for our build. The 200 watt version is perfectly sized for our tank. It's absolutely crucial to place your heater in an area of the tank that will never run dry. That means the return chamber is a bad idea. For this Innovative Marine 40 tank, the second chamber works perfectly for a couple reasons. Number one, even if your return pump breaks or you forget to top off your aquarium, the water height remains constant. And number two, it's a high flow area, meaning all of that heated water will quickly be dispersed throughout your entire system. We'll put the temperature probe on the opposite side of the rear filtration chamber and set our controller to 78 degrees. The controller will keep our aquarium water temperature from 77 degrees to 78 degrees. And if something should fail, we'll set the backup alarm to 75 degrees on the low end and 80 degrees on the high end. If you're gonna use a different heater, be sure to also pick up a temperature controller. Bayite and Inkbird are two good brands I've used in the past that have worked well for me. One quick note on heater size, don't overbuy. It's tempting to think that more power equals more better, but when it comes to heaters, that is absolutely false. If your oversized heater fails in the on position and you're not around to hear the audible alarm, it can kill all of your fish and corals in a matter of hours. But if your correctly sized heater fails in the on position, you'll have a lot more time before the water gets too hot. Never put all of your faith in one heater because all heaters have mechanical parts and all mechanical parts will eventually fail. By a second heater, nothing fancy, I'll be using this glass Eheim Jaeger heater and set it to 74 degrees. This way, when your primary heater eventually fails, the water temperature will only drop to 74 degrees, saving your tank and triggering an audible alarm, letting you know something's wrong. An inexpensive secondary heater is worth its weight in diamonds. For some of us, the climate conversation stops with heating. But for those of us without air conditioning or who live in an oftentimes ridiculously hot desert, there will be times when we need to cool our tanks down. Luckily, science is our friend here. The process of evaporation actually cools our aquarium water. The greater the rate of evaporation, the more our water cools. We have two primary ways to increase evaporation in our systems. First is through surface agitation. The more ripples we create at the surface, the greater the cooling. This is easily accomplished by pointing a wave maker up at the water surface. The second way to increase evaporation and thus cool your tank is air movement across the surface of the water. You can use any fan, but something like this Aquawind fan from Tunza is handy because it's low profile, clips to the rim of the tank, and is designed to spread the air out over a wide area, increasing evaporation. Typically Typically increased surface agitation with a skillfully positioned fan will be able to reduce your water temperature two to three degrees, which means as long as you keep your home 80 degrees or under, you'll be able to keep the water temperature at 78 degrees. Your fish and coral will likely be fine with a water temperature approaching 80 degrees, but I wouldn't go much higher than that. An organized tank is a safe tank and a redundant tank is a safer tank. Building in redundancy just means planning ahead for future human mistakes and equipment failures. We're gonna create as much redundancy as possible and installing an aquarium controller will be a huge help. We're using the Neptune Apex, but GHL and Hydros also make similar products. Our first step, 
organize everything. We're using this adaptive reef control board to not only hide all of our wires, but to also organize all of our various controllers. I love these power supply brackets from Ecotech, and we're gonna use a ton of Velcro cable ties to keep the wires tidy. You'll definitely want to label all of those wires, and this split sleeving from Alex Tech makes a great finishing touch. For now, I'm gonna set up the Neptune Apex to monitor the tank's pH and temperature, and to send me alerts if anything is out of whack. In future episodes, we'll use the same Apex to automate water changes, safely dose ozone, set up leak detection, and quite a bit more. Did you know that creating the right water movement in your aquarium can make the difference between healthy and dying corals, between clear and cloudy water, and between an algae-free tank or one you break down in frustration in under a year? Get the right flow in your tank by watching episode five right here. Thanks for watching, happy reefing, be well, and we'll see you in the next episode.